What breaks a fast? What can you take while you're fasting? These are the questions we're going to cover, and it's coming right up. First, I'm going to share with you Mitch's story. She started fasting about two and a half years ago, and since then she's been able to regain her health and lost over 12 dress sizes. She says, I've been on a yo-yo diet for most of my adult life. I've tried many diets, weight loss groups, gyms, you name it, I've tried it. But she could never keep that weight off. And eventually her health started to decline. She got diagnosed with prediabetes and non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. And that's when she stumbled across fasting. She read The Complete Guide to Fasting and thought it made sense. So she started out and I'm going to share with you her best tip and also her regimen coming right up after this video. What can you take during fasting? Well, it really depends on the reason that you're fasting. So there's many different reasons. Some are religious, some are spiritual, some are for weight loss, some are to reverse type 2 diabetes. And depending on the reason that you're doing the fast, that can determine what you can take during the fast. So let's go over some of the basics. First, dry fasting. Dry fasting is when you don't take any food and you also don't drink any fluids during that fast. Dry fasting is limited because you can't go for very long periods of time without drinking. So I generally recommend to be less than 16 or 18 hours because you're not only fasting, but because you're not getting fluids, you're also going to be getting dehydrated. So this is only for short periods of time. Some people find that dry fasting is much easier for them than regular fasting. When you fast, a lot of times the body's trying to get rid of the excess water, and this can cause people to go to the bathroom a lot or even sometimes some diarrhea. Dry fasting is a way to get around that. Some people also find that when they're doing dry fasting that the hunger is easier to control. So that's one of the reasons you might consider it. But remember, you can only do it for a short period of time. The classic fast allows only water. That's it. So you're not eating, but you're still staying hydrated by drinking water. And this is great if you're doing things like trying to activate autophagy, where anything will really cause you to go out of autophagy. We can get into that in another video. So when people say, what breaks your fast? Really, anything other than water technically breaks your fast. But if you're fasting for th something such as weight loss, then there are other things that you can take during the fast that are still going to allow you to lose weight effectively, even though it's not, strictly speaking, a fast. And I call these fasting variations. So there's lots of fasting fluids that you can take to help you on your fast that are still going to let you get great results in terms of weight loss and reversing your type 2 diabetes. Tea is a great fluid to take during fasting. There's green teas, there's black teas, uh, and there's herbal teas. Herbal teas are not true teas, but they're things such as mint leaves or hibiscus or chamomile, for example. So green teas are from the unfermented tea leaves and black teas are fully fermented. Both of them are great during fasting and they're not gonna affect you in terms of weight loss. They really have no calories. Green tea is great and often is not taken with any other types of additives or sweeteners. With black teas, there are often sweeteners, but you have to really cut those out because they are going to affect your weight loss. A little bit of cream is probably okay. Coffee is also a great fluid to take while you're fasting. It also has a lot of caffeine and that's great to give you some energy and also keep your metabolic rate up and it also tends to suppress the hunger. Oftentimes I'll say to people, if you're feeling hungry, get yourself a nice big cup of green tea or coffee, and by the time you finish it, your hunger will have mostly passed. What about adding things to your coffee? A lot of people add either cream or milk or sugar or sweetener. In terms of cream and milk, you can add a little bit, but just a little bit for flavor, and it doesn't really affect the fast very much. Sweeteners 
and sugar, you definitely have to cut those out. While it sounds like a great idea to take sweeteners, for example, that have no calories, the problem is that they're very sweet and they may stimulate your appetite and make you more hungry. So they're going to have a paradoxical effect on your fast. It's going to make it harder rather than easier. So you need to cut those out entirely. So why is a little bit of cream okay? When you take a little bit of cream, there's calories there. So it clearly breaks your fast. But it doesn't mean that all your hard work has gone out the window. When you're fasting, the whole point is that you're trying to lower your insulin levels. As your insulin levels fall, that's the signal for your body to start using up some of the stores of food energy or calories that is stored away. Either the sugar, like blood sugar, or body fat. When you take that little bit of cream, and it's the same for a little bit of snacks, for example, if you have a handful of nuts or something very small, What's going to happen is that your insulin level is going to blip up a little bit. But because it was very small, it's immediately going to start falling again. And as it starts falling again, your body's going to start going back and looking for those calories from the body stores. A little bit of cream in the tea, that's okay, but don't overdo it. Same thing goes if you're having a snack. If you inadvertently broke your fast by taking a little bit of salad or little nuts. Don't worry about it. It's not the end of the world. It doesn't mean that all that fasting you did ahead of it is for waste. You don't have to start again from zero. It's just a little blip. You just go right back to fasting and then you're still going to get all the benefits of that weight loss. Can you drink diet soda during a fast? This one's a little tricky. Some people find that they do fine with diet soda. But for a lot of people, that sweetness makes them very hungry and makes it much harder for them to fast. So if you don't have any problems with it, go ahead, use it. But for most people, I recommend staying away. Supplements don't need to be taken during fasting, but if you want to, they're not going to break the fast after. Remember, these are often vitamins or minerals, sometimes oils such as omega-3 oils, vitamin D, vitamin E. Those things are not going to stimulate insulin and therefore they're perfectly fine to take while you're fasting. But you don't need to fast because you're going to eat again and it's best to get all your vitamins from the natural foods. But if you take one every day, there's no need to cut that out during fasting. The same goes for electrolytes and this is uh, salt, potassium, for example, magnesium. Sometimes people feel that they need to take some of these electrolytes during their fast. And it's perfectly okay to, but don't feel that you need to. If you're not eating and you're not drinking, you're really getting almost zero sodium. So some people might feel a little dizzy from that. And so they can take a little salt in water or sometimes just a little salt under the tongue. Sounds very strange, but some people find a real benefit from that. Same thing goes for potassium or magnesium supplements. If you feel that you need some, go ahead and take it, but don't feel that you have to take it. Your body is very smart. Even though you're not taking in electrolytes like sodium and potassium, if your body needs those electrolytes, it will take it all back in your kidneys. So you don't have to control it. Your body's going to do that automatically for you. What about juices? Juice fasting is very popular where you don't eat, but you drink some juice. However, for weight loss, it's probably not the best thing if you're taking juices that are full of sugar. So fruit juices, like apple juice or orange juice, contain a significant amount of sugar. These are natural sugars contained in the fruit, but because you're getting rid of all the other things, all the fiber, all the pulp, and so on, it is a relatively concentrated amount of sugar. So I don't recommend it. So let's get back to Mitch's story. Here she was after years of dieting. Weight came down, weight went back up, and she was left with severe back and leg pain. She could barely even walk. When she started fasting, she started off with two months of 16-8. But during her fasting period, she would drink diet soda. And what she found was that the sweeteners always made her hungry. It was so hard to keep on that fast. After she read the book, she found, oh, 
That's not a good idea. She cut that out and switched instead to black coffee. And then she found she could easily go 19 hours fasting without difficulty. So most days she started going 19 hours fasting, five hour eating window. Sometimes some people call this time restricted eating. And then the weight started to come off and her pain started to go away. Then her sugars came back down to normal, her prediabetes went away, the liver enzymes normalized and her fatty liver got better. Once a month, she also adds in a 24 hour fast just to get all those additional benefits. And she's able to keep that weight off and she has more energy than she's ever had. When we asked her what her top tip was, she said, if your scale is not showing you the results, then try taking a photo once a week. Because even if the scale is not moving, she could sense that her body was changing. Her waist was coming down, her dress size was coming down, and it was clear when she was able to look back that she was getting healthier. And that kept her motivated to keep going all the way until she got to her goal. Great work, Mitch. Well, that's it for this week. I hope you learned something. And if you did, make sure you share it with your friends. Maybe you can help them as well. And if you enjoyed it, if you could do me a favor, can you just hit the like button just down below, the one that looks like this? Thanks everybody, and thanks for subscribing. We're at 300,000 subscribers, that's a huge number. And it's all due to you, so thank you very much. I'm hoping that we can Share this out there, make sure that everybody knows how they can use this information to change their lives. Bye everybody.